welcome back to another week of our Super Fruit Series. And guess what? You have made it to week eight of super fruits that's right week eight and there's only nine fruit of the spirit so we've got one more to go after this message but hey if you've watched every single one of them great job and if you haven't make sure you go back and watch them we don't want you to miss a single fruit now before i get into today's fruit of the spirit and maybe you already know what one it is i'm gonna pray and believe that the holy spirit will come and speak to us all today but before I do that, make sure you run and grab your notebook, grab a pen and grab a Bible so that we can write down what God is speaking to us about today. All right, are you ready? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you so much that you are here today. Lord, I thank you that you have already spoken to us so many things throughout this series. But I pray that as I bring today's message, that it would be no different, that you would continue to speak to every single one of us something special, something unique today. We love you so much and honour you in this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Have you ever had to hold something so precious, so fragile, maybe something really small or really important before. Like what you might be asking? Maybe like a newborn baby. Maybe you've had a little sister or a little brother that were once a tiny wee baby that when you were younger, your parents got you to hold. Or maybe it was a cousin or just a friend. Well, recently, one of my friends had a baby and I was so excited to meet her. And so when I went to meet this baby, I realized this baby was so small, so petite and so fragile. And they asked me if I wanted to hold her. <gasps> Let me tell you, I was quite nervous because I knew I had to be really careful with this baby. So I sat down. I waited and they placed her in my arms and I got to hold this super small, super cute baby. And I got lots of cuddles and only a few stinky baby farts. It wasn't too bad. In fact, it was lovely. But what I realized is I had to be super gentle. And you might have guessed already, but today's fruit of the spirit is gentleness. In fact, if you're writing down notes, you can write down gentleness. But the difference is, when we're talking about gentleness, we're not necessarily talking about gentleness that you show on the outside or express outwardly, but it's about carrying gentleness on the inside, having a spirit of gentleness. So, what does it mean to be gentle? Okay, I know you guys are super book smart and so want a definition that you can write down in your notebooks. So I have the definition for gentleness for you today and it is having or showing a mild, kind or tender character. So it's having and or showing a kind, a mild or a tender character. See, Gentleness is something that we can carry on the inside and ultimately it will express on the outside through our speech and through our actions. These are the things that will ultimately shine out of us when we grow the fruit of the Spirit being gentleness. So there's a story in the Bible in the book of 1 Samuel 25. Make sure you write that down so you can read it a little bit later. But it's about... Three people actually, a guy named Nabal, a guy named David, who you probably should know by now, and a woman named Abigail. See, Nabal, he was not the nicest man to deal with. He wasn't super kind. I definitely probably wouldn't say he carried the fruit of gentleness. But David heard that Nabal uh, on a journey was not such a great man and he wanted to try and make peace with Nabal. So what did he do? He sent a message ahead to Nabal to try and create peace between them. But Nabal, he didn't receive that message so well. 
And so he sent a rude message back to David. Oh, big mistake. David, again, wasn't too happy with that response. But here's where Abigail comes in. See, Abigail was Nabal's wife and she heard what Nabal had done and she knew that wasn't the right decision. So what did she do? She ran out to meet David before he got to where they were. Abigail kindly and gently asked David for forgiveness. And David was pleased and willing to accept her apology, willing to forgive Nabal for what he had said, simply because Abigail had gone to ask for forgiveness. In fact, the story goes on and it's a little bit crazy because Abigail later told Nabal and the Lord soon struck Nabal down and he died. And upon hearing the news, David praised God and ended up marrying Abigail. Okay, wow, that's a bit of a crazy story. But what I can tell you is that Abigail went to David knowing the situation that had happened and had asked David for forgiveness. Remember our definition of gentleness? Having or showing a mild, kind or tender character. Do you think that's what Abigail did? Did she show a mild, kind or tender character? I think so. I think when she approached David, that she went humbly, that she went kindly, willing to ask for forgiveness, not even for what she had done, but for what she had known Nabal had done to David. I think Abigail is a great example of what it looks like to be carrying gentleness in our spirit. And as we grow close to the Holy Spirit, we can grow the gentleness in our lives too. See, I need you to write something down. Gentleness is a strength. Gentleness is a strength. Now, I think we can sometimes mistake gentleness because it shows us being soft and gooey, kind of like this Play-Doh. And we can think that being gentle it surely couldn't mean something good. It surely couldn't be a strength something soft and gooey, how can that possibly be strong? The power of gentleness is not what it is, but what it can do. See, when we are gentle, it can create something amazing. When we are gentle, it can create a kind heart in us. When we are gentle, it can create a willingness in others to listen, to hear, to forgive. Gentleness is our strength because when we approach someone with a mild or kind or tender character, it doesn't just create something in us, but it can create something in them. And that's kind of like this Play-Doh. This can be shaped, it can be molded to make some incredible things. And I want to encourage you, just like this Play-Doh, gentleness can actually have so much larger an impact than we could ever imagine. I mean, we see Abigail save Nabal in that moment when she willingly went with her gentle spirit to David and asked for forgiveness. Not only that, but David, who was so angry, was then able to willingly forgive her and Nabal in that moment. See, Abigail's gentleness was her strength. It saved her and Nabal in that moment. And it even meant that in the future, her and David were to be married. It was the gentleness that she outwardly showed towards David that saved her. And just like Abigail, we can be gentle in spirit too. We don't have to do something really big and bold, but rather when we carry gentleness, we carry a kind, a mild, and a tender character that we can show in our speech and in our actions as we go about our day to day that can have a massive impact on the people around us. Hey, I'd love to pray for you. If you find it hard to carry that gentleness, if you find it hard to carry that kind and mild and tender character, 
I'd love to pray for you. In fact, why don't you lift both your hands, every single person to heaven, and let's believe that God will start to move in our hearts to create in us a gentleness of spirit. Let's pray. Lord, right now, I just pray over every single person hearing this message. I pray that as we go through our day to day, that you would create in us a gentleness of spirit. That as we grow closer to you, that we would grow in our kindness, that we would grow in our tenderness, and that we would be able to show people around us that gentleness. Lord, we know that as we do, that something amazing can happen, that it will touch people's hearts, that it will have a greater impact than we could ever imagine. We pray that you would grow us in our gentleness, that we would have a revelation that gentleness is our strength. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Oh, what an honor it is to pray that prayer with you today. But there's one more prayer that I would like to pray with you today. And that's if you would like to accept Jesus as your best friend and your saviour, if that's you, on the count of three, I would love to know who I'm praying for. So if you could just give a little wave to acknowledge that you want to pray this prayer, that will be the most exciting thing that can happen today. On the count of three, if that's you and you would like to pray this prayer, inviting Jesus into your heart, why don't you give me that wave? One, two, three. Amazing, awesome, so many of you. That is so exciting, so, so cool. Well, why don't we all pray together out loud as one family? I'll say a line and then you can say the line after me. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for loving me and for giving me life. I'm sorry for the things I've done wrong. Please forgive me and take away the sin that blocks me from you. I believe in you. Be my Lord. Be my best friend. Now and forever. Amen. Amen. Oh man, a massive, massive congrats to you if you have made that decision to follow Jesus. We are so excited for you. But hey, make sure you keep seeking the Holy Spirit, growing in the super fruits, and we will see you next time. Kakite!